Okay, so we're going to be fitting a uh, boost gauge today to an R56 Mini. We just thought we'd give you a run through of the tools we're going to be using in, in our video today. So we've got a piggyback fuse holder, so that'll go into uh, into a, a live source, maybe headlights or interior light or cigarette lighter fuse, depending on what's available. Uh, a selection of screwdrivers, a crimper. Uh, we've got some wiring then for positive and negative. Uh, going to need um, an electrical tester so you can if, if maybe to figure out uh, like a, a live feed some selections of tape you'll see what we're going to do with the masking tape in a bit we ha then have our lovely socket set we've got our lovely pod gauge now this comes from a company called airy fix um, they're quite cheap for what they are I believe they're 3d printed so We've not yet tested these. We'll see what it's like once we've got it in the car. Then we've got a adapter. And that there will plug into your existing map sensor hole. And your map sensor then will go into that hole there. And it just screws in. And then you've got a tee off here then for your vacuum source for your boost gauge. And then there we have it. We've got our lovely boost gauge there from Turbo Smart. I'm sure that's going to look absolutely epic once it's in the car. And that's the part number of the Turbo Smart gauge we're using today. We have got our map sensor adapter in now. We've got vacuum line attached to that, which is a 5mm vacuum line. Uh, which then we've drilled a hole through the plastic scuttle, or bulkhead if you want to call it bulkhead, uh, which is a 10mm hole. And over that then we've got the pipe coming through, up here. Uh, front, front, Temporary measure at the moment. We've just we're not we haven't got our connector, so we've just fucking bodged that in for now. And um, just to see if the gauge is going to work, but obviously we're not going to drive anywhere until the actual adapter's in, and it's nice and reliable and safe. Then we've gone down there into the, the old grommet. Then we have got uh, we've poked a hole in there and pushed our uh, tubing in then, and it's come out through the other side. Uh, we've put there the tubing and the wiring then up towards the, up the steering column with the existing wiring and um, cable tied it in and in the places down where we can we put conduit around it as well just to give it a bit of extra protection it didn't really need the conduit but it just looks a bit better um, so that's that side done so once our, our joiner for that pipe there comes we'll be away now we, I've done it this way so that when when it's there there's a hatch and it's then serviceable you know if I, ever get, if I ever get any problems where I suspect that this joint is leaking for any reason at all I can actually open the hatch without taking all of the scuttle back off and I can just see it um, and, it, and it's there so that's that bit done um, the actual this piece here then should should go back on and it look pretty factory he says there we are and that's that bit on so that's the bit you've got to take off to it's only three clips you've got a, a, a flat blade screwed over a small one ideally just gently pull these nibs up on all three corners and it'll come off moving into the car now we've already started to put this back together but the tubing actually comes out underneath there and we've run it then up in here uh, let's have a look. there you can see there's the tubing wrapped in conduit and that runs all the way up then up to here so we're going to end up maybe adjusting some other bits and bobs once we've got it finalised but that's the pod that's the end we're just making some more adjustments now to the actual fixing to the, of the pod and she'll be away we'll be ready for testing so earlier today we fitted a turbo smart boost gauge uh, an airy fix uh, boost gauge pod and we wired it in and plumbed it all in 
uh, went quite well. Um, the only thing we had a problem with was the actual filming of the video. We lost half of the content. So what we've done is I'm going to just fill in the blanks. So uh, we'll go from there. So this is the end product. Um, it looks quite tidy, to be fair. The pod gauge is nice and secure. Uh, we believe it's 3D printed, as I said before. We're not entirely sure, but it looks 3D printed. Uh, quite a reasonable price. It, I think it was 15.99 from Mary Fix, and that's posted. Uh, comes with the, with with a, a longer screw for you to fit into the back. Um, so let me go through over the over the car now, and you can have a look. So well, how we've wired it in, we've wired it in uh, with a piggyback fuse uh, in the driver's side compartment. Uh, we're in fuse F32 um, which according to the wiring diagram is the fuse location for um, your uh, cigarette lighter um, which obviously you know as it is now we'll key out the ignition we've got nothing no no power to the gauge ignition uh, key and ignition still nothing there uh, once we've got then power on ignition on we've got switch live which is the feed for uh, for the boost gauge uh we've actually earthed it on the steering column there's a but there's, a, there's four big torque bolts so we've taken one of them out which would which is on the uh the driver's side or the your, your your right leg um and it's the first one so we've we've put a ring ring connector in there and, and earthed it out um as you can see from the back we've got our wires and the boost gauge they're all tucked in quite nicely um, we've got our feed there which is all conjured up so you can't see it it looks quite tidy it looks quite factory in some way um, rather than just having shit hanging out because let's be honest in your mod you can't got shit hanging out it looks shit so now then now, to do this, what we had to do was release your, your rake lever, okay? Pull your steering wheel all the way up and pull it all the way down. That'll give you access. To two screws, one and two. They're T30 Torx. Take those two out. You will need a flat blade screwdriver just to lift the screws up and then the actual cluster will slide out this way. Once you've got that out, you can gain access to the screws to the back of the cluster so you can fit the, 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 uh, the pod gauge, um, or the gauge pod rather. Once you've done that, this top piece here is actually clipped in. so you. You need to get a, a trim tool, or if you don't really care about the trim, put a screwdriver in there and just release the clips. Um, the bottom is under the under the panel here. So as you go down there, so under the panel you've got one, two, and three torque screws. Release those, remove those, and then. This panel will actually pull. It's clip, push clipped at the top. Once you got that panel off, you'll see the two screw, uh, one screw this side and one screw the opposite side for this. Once they are out and this is off, you will see there's two silver screws going down. You need to remove those. Then the bottom trim will, will come out and the top trim will come out. So you'll have all the trims off. Uh, then you'll be able to get access then to put, place your wire in. As you can see from ours, it goes down, it follows the existing wire loom down the steering column and then it comes out into the fuse box. Um, as for the fuse box, so we've got an F32, which if you look at this, F32 comes up as like your heated seats in your mirror. According to the online sources we've looked at, F32 is actually for your, so as I said earlier, your, um, your cigarette lighter, your, your 12 volt switch live. Um, so as you can see, that's where we've gone there. We've got our 
piggyback fuse wired in. Nice clean job, no cutting and shutting of wires. Just straight in, fucking job done. And that is pretty much how you fit the boost gauge. I've seen a few things online with these boost gauges for these R56s and they all say, hmm, you, you need the altar. Uh, and then they tell you to put it on your DSC button and remove all your console. And, you know, hardwire it into here and hardwire it into here. Well, we've done that today in half the time and proved that it works just as well. So I don't think you need to go out and buy an altar kit. This has cost us, well, the gauge cost 45 because it's Turbo Smart. Uh, the pod was, say, 15.99. It's come with the tubing. The only thing we bought extra is the piggyback um, fuse and the wiring for it. So it's, it costs seven pound for the fuse and the wiring. So it, it's it's not really cost us a lot. If you go, I mean, if you if you are an R56 man and you start looking at stuff like this, you know it costs it can cost a fortune to put a boost gauge in in one of these and have it clean without actually just drilling a hole in somewhere and adding a gauge in. Um, what I will say is, for me on a personal level. I wouldn't have had it there. I'd have had it in um, in one of the vents. But this is not my car. This is, believe it or not, my dad's, who is a, a member of the Westis Modified crew. He's one of the idiots. He's one of the ones that goes out, believe it or not, he's nearly 60 years old, and he goes out and thraps, thrapes his cars more than we do. He is an absolute bell end. But that's part and parcel of being part of Westis Modified. You've got to, you've got to have fun. You've got to love your cars, and that's what it's all about. This channel, we're all about cars. We like our cars. We like our modified cars, as you can see. Lovely gauge fitted today, courtesy of me for the old man. Um, he fucking loves it, man. He loves it. Loves the boost. Anyway, we'll uh, finish the video off there. Anyway. Hope you uh, hope you like the video and subscribe and like, guys. There'll be plenty more content coming from from us soon. We are a new and upcoming channel. We may look like a pair of tits doing this. We may not. We don't really care. We just want to have fun and uh, get on YouTube with a bit of content. Cheers. Peace out, guys. Mm -hmm.